So what if you want to take nice figure photos, but of course you are not going to spend $3,000 on the camera, right? Is my smartphone good enough? Okay, so we're going to test things over here, right? Hi and welcome back to the studio, Steven right here. Today we have something related to figure photography, right? And because I'm just doing a warm up over here, I have not photographed anime figures in a diorama for over two years now. I'm starting things light, right? I'm keeping things a bit simple. I know this looks <laughs> complicated to you guys, but this is relatively simple actually. Uh, and I'm also using a price figure for today. Sega Price Sega SPM series Cleopatra from Fate Grand Order Assassin Class Servant and I'm going to take a photo just like that no table lamp nothing right and we'll see what the result looks like so would should I be using a camera like this or should I be using a smartphone yeah I think I'll be using an expensive camera just to prove a point that well, it doesn't matter how expensive your camera is, if you don't set up lights when you photograph anime figures, you're not going to get any good results, right? Okay, and for today's session, I'm going to use 50mm lens, right? Yeah, uh, 50 is a focal length I use very often for my uh, diorama photography. I love 50mm because uh, it looks very natural, it looks normal. It is very close to the human eye perspective, right? So I'll stick to 15mm over here. This is a Sigma Art 15mm 1.4, uh, which is on the expensive side for a lens for any hobbyist, right? But the good news is every camera brand like Canon, Nikon, Sony, they have a cheap 15mm 1.8. You can buy for cameras and those lenses cost like $200 only, right? This is about $600 lens. And I have another 15mm lens that cost $2,000 in. It's not with me over here, right? This is somewhere in between. This is a $600 lens. All right. Uh, let me... <laughs> wow, my lens is dusty. Okay. So let me put on my lens hood. Lens hood is a must, right? Prevents flaring. Right? This hood is a must. Okay. Uh, where should I start? Yeah. I'm going to shoot a photo right here of this set up without any lights or oh, let's just go all the way to 800 because I'm shooting this handheld I'm too lazy to mount the camera on the tripod at the moment the point is not about stability I want to show you guys what it looks like when I take a photo of this complex looking diorama right away right so what I'm putting on screen over here this is what it looks like straight out of a $3,000 camera, right? This camera body is $3,000, the lens is $600. So $3,600 bucks over here. Now, this is where the magic is. The magic is lights, right? Okay, uh, let me turn off everything and show you guys what it looks like. Alright, looking much better, isn't it? So to brief you guys on what I'm setting up over here, there are two table lamps over here. These are LED lights you can buy cheaply from uh, AliExpress, from Taobao. This one of these cost less than 10 US dollars. Tissue paper acting as a diffuser to make the light softer, right? 
And as you can see back there, yeah, that is the biggest catch of this scene over here. Uh, I have a huge light behind to light up this background. This is printed cloth. It is fabric, right? And the beauty about fabric is that it is translucent. So if you send any pictures to a shop to be printed on a sheet of cloth like this, yeah, and you turn on lights behind, it lights up, it looks very natural. Alright, so now with the lights on, what does the result look like with the same camera, same lens, right? What does it look like? Let me take another shot. So do you guys see the difference now between having lights and having no lights and putting the pictures side by side? What a huge difference. The one with lights looks a lot better. And of course, I need to turn off everything in a dark studio environment, a dark room in general, not just necess not necessarily a studio. You need a dark room. And the only light source you should be having are your table lamps or whatever lamps you set up to photograph the figure, right? Okay, uh, of course, I just photographed this handheld. Ideally, I would want to do this on a tripod with a timer. So what if you want to take nice figure photos, but of course, you are not going to spend $3,000 on the camera, right? Is my smartphone good enough? Okay, so we're going to test things over here, right? We're going to test the same setup, the same lights with a smartphone camera. This is not a cheap smartphone. This is a Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra. Yeah, this is not S24, the latest model, but it is still an ultra model, a flagship model from almost two years ago. The camera is not too shabby either. And in addition to a smartphone, I'm going to try using this entry-level camera, which is what most of you would buy if you're looking for your first camera. This is a Nikon Z30 with a standard stock kit lens, right? 16 to 50 millimeter. This is around 650 to 700 US dollars per set. Camera body and lens per set, no more than $700, which is still cheaper than my S22 Ultra smartphone over here. Okay, so we're going to try things over here. Now we shall make use of my smartphone. And you guys will see in a moment why I am in favor of dedicated cameras when it comes to figure photography. So if I were to shoot from the same position over here, just now I used my DSLR, I photographed from around this position. If I'm using the smartphone from the same position, this is what I would get. Because, yeah, wide angle lens. Smartphone cameras are too wide. Uh, for figure photography. They are just not good for figure photography for this reason. So, of course, if the lens is too wide, I shall just go nearer to the figure, right? Yes. So, I'll be I will be so close to the figure over here just to fit the entire figure in. And this is the best I could get. But, as you can see, the background, the cloth is not big enough. Right, you can see the cloth at the side because the lens is way too wide. So the solution over here is to use the 3x lens, which is about 70 millimeters. Yeah, it is a bit longer than 50, but hey. Okay, so if I were to use a 70 millimeter and photograph it, so this is what I got with my smartphone. And as you can see, there is a stark difference between photographing with a dedicated camera and with a smartphone because the problem with smartphone cameras is that there is AI, artificial intelligence operating the camera and what AI does is that it will almost always try to brighten your photo even though this is supposed to be a dark scene like this is a gloomy forest which looks like a swamp and we want the scenery to be darker but the smartphone camera will always try to brighten the photo. And this isn't what I want. This looks terrible, right? That is the first problem I'm seeing with this image. The second problem is that the whole image is in focus, right? I mean, to compare it to my photo from a DSLR or a mirrorless camera for the matter, you can see the front of the figure, the grass, the foliage in front of the figure, they are very nicely blurred off. They are very blurry, very soft looking, yet the figure is tech sharp. Yeah, we call this bokeh. 
in photographic terms, B O K E H, or uh, a blur created by lenses, optical blur, right? And this is something highly desirable. This soft looking blur behind and in front of the figure, this is something no smartphone cameras are capable of reproducing. Does not matter whether you are using an $1,800 one terabyte model iPhone Pro Max or whether you are using a $300 entry level phone from China, it does not matter. No phones are capable of producing images like this, not without AI software intervention, like adding an artificial blur because it is physics, right? The camera sensors in smartphones are way too small. It is physics. There is nothing can be done about it unless you fake the blur in editing, which is not easy to do. Okay. Uh, that is actually the main reason why I don't recommend smartphones for figure photography. If you want to take the craft, the art of photography very seriously, right? Yeah, it works if you just want to take sample photos and show people what the quality of the figure looks like. That is fine, but if you want to do photography even more so dioramas like this, nope. Smartphones are not capable of that at all, not even close. And let me show you guys what, a, what this camera can do. This is a $700 camera. This cost less than half of an iPhone Pro Max. And I'm just using the stock lens over here, right? The kit lens. I'm not changing to some premium lens over here. I'm using the stock lens. And this is what I got straight out of camera, not yet edited. And as you can see, how this $700 camera, including the lens, is beating the crap out of a $1,000 plus smartphone. That is like an $1,100, $1,200 smartphone right there, right? And this is the reason why I always encourage people to buy a separate dedicated camera. If you are getting into figure photography, even more so when you are shooting indoors like this with your own lighting setup, there is no way a smartphone is going to catch up to even the cheapest mirrorless cameras out there, right? Uh, in addition to the Nikon Z30, Something else around the same price point, there is the Canon R50 or the Sony ZV-E10, you can check out. Yeah, they're all around that 650 to 750 US dollar price range, right? If you're looking to pick up your first camera. Alright, a quick overview of what I did with this setup over here. If you want to know in more detail what this base is made of, yeah, I think you guys can already see it in... Uh, this footage over here, this is made of styrofoam, right? Everything here is styrofoam. And if you wanted to know how I, how I made this thing, yeah, I have a video I made like two years ago on um, Mary Antoinette, also an FGO scale figure, figure photography video back then, which I'm linking right up here. Yeah, uh, there is more detail on how I made this thing with styrofoam, like almost step by step, right? So you get to see what it was like okay so i'm going to show you guys what is the component of this thing over here obviously the base is styrofoam this is actually plucked from artificial grass right this thing over here uh yeah you can find this in gardening stores right yeah uh, artificial grass cover the whole thing and then you spray paint it you paint it however you want really simple yeah it takes time but it is not too difficult as for these artificial tree branches, once again, you can find these online or even in stores that sell interior decor, gardening stuff. Yeah, artificial tree branches, right? Also, what I have over here is like, what do you call this? This is like a tree branch, uh, not exactly a tree branch. This is something like a, a rattan good or something like that, which there is metal wire in it. And really, this thing does not serve much purposes. Uh, it is just there just for the sake of it because I'm trying to conceal the foot pack of Cleopatra over here. This thing, right, this thing is meant to conceal the foot pack, which this figure is not plugged into the snake at all, right? As you can see, there we go. <laughs> yeah, just like that. I'm just putting the figure, I'm just clipping the figure like this and then making use of her hair to lean against the snake. And this artificial grass over here will conceal the foot pack. Simple. As for this snake over here, right? Uh, yeah, you may be asking, did I 3D print this thing? 
yes, it is totally doable with 3D printing. Just that I did not want to because the cost can be rather high in case I screw up something. I need to reprint it. Yeah, it would be quite expensive. This is actually a wine bottle holder I imported from China. Yeah, it is a resin model. Uh, this one right here I'm putting on screen. Yes, it is a wine bottle holder, except I repainted the whole thing by hand, by the way. Yeah, I spray painted the base coat and then the gold color paint, the green paint, and then the shiny eye over there, they are all hand painted by me. Yeah, as you can see, that wine holder snake model did not cost me much. It is quite cheap. So this entire setup over here did not cost me much money, right? Yes, I know this is way too much effort just to photograph a $15, $20 price figure, but this is exactly what I enjoy with this hobby of anime figures. It is not just about collecting and showing off how big of a collection I have. I enjoy creating artwork and photography work out of anime figures. That is all for today's video. If you find this video insightful, helpful, or even informative, please give this video a like. This is a new series of anime figure photography content I'm coming up with for year 2024. This is the second video, by the way. Last month, I published one which I went outdoors. Yeah, this is the second episode in a way. And yeah, you can expect more stuff like this coming soon in the future. Until then, I'll see you guys again soon. Goodbye.